Um, so Dr. Voorhees, can you give an overview of the study design of the phase two Griffin study and highlight um, the updated findings? Absolutely. Uh, so Griffin was a clinical trial, a phase two clinical trial, where we assessed uh, the efficacy and safety of the addition of daratumumab into the lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone, or RVD backbone, for patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma who were transplant eligible. And there were two components of the study that will be providing updates at the American Society of Hematology meeting. Uh, there was a 16 patient uh, safety run-in that we now have very long follow-up on. And then that was followed by a randomized uh, phase two trial. So with regards to the uh, safety run-in phase of the study, we wanted to be absolutely sure that the incorporation of daratumumab into the RVD backbone was going to be safe. And in particular, we were very interested in determining whether the addition of daratumumab into the RVD backbone would have any impact on stem cell mobilization in time to engraftment. So we took 16 patients and they were treated with four induction uh, chemotherapy cycles consisting of daratumumab given on a weekly basis uh, with RVD. Uh, those patients then went on to stem cell collection utilizing GCSF with or without the addition of plerixifor uh, for stem cell mobilization, a melphalan uh, 200 milligram per meter squared stem cell transplant. And at the time that they recovered from transplant, they then received two cycles of consolidation therapy consisting of daratumumab and RVD, followed by two years of daratumumab and lenalidomide maintenance therapy. Uh, for those patients completing a study maintenance, uh, those patients were encouraged to remain on lenalidomide monotherapy as maintenance until disease progression or the emergence of unacceptable side effects. So with regards to the uh, safety run-in, you know, I, I'm happy to report you know, that overall, uh, the treatment was very well tolerated. So I'm happy to report uh, that the addition of daratumumab into the RVD backbone was very well tolerated in the safety run-in phase. All 16 patients in, uh, completed induction therapy, stem cell mobilization, transplant consolidation, and entered maintenance therapy. There were only two out of the 16 patients who had to discontinue therapy during maintenance, one due to an adverse event and the other one uh, due to uh, progression of disease. Uh, the majority of the patients who were enrolled in the safety run-in uh, had uh, stage, uh, ISS stage one disease, 75%, but high risk site genetics were well represented uh, with 25% of the patients in the safety run-in uh, having a deletion 17P. And importantly, when we looked at uh, stem cell yields in this particular part of the study, uh, the median CD34 positive stem cell yield was 8.1 with a range of 3.5 to 17.6. Um, about half of the patients, a little over half of the patients received a plerixifor in addition to the GCSF uh, for the stem cell mobilization. No patients required chemotherapy, uh, specifically cyclophosphamide for mobilization and time, median time to neutrophil and platelet engraftment were 14 and 13 and a half days uh, respectively. So, you know, this would indicate, you know, at least uh, in the early run of things, you know, that there was not a clinically significant uh, impact on stem cell mobilization or engraftment uh, with the addition of daratumumab into the RVD backbone. As far as the other, you know, um, adverse events, I think I'll save that for when I discuss the randomized phase two portion of the trial. When we look at uh, the, the efficacy of this particular uh, regimen and the safety run-in patients, um, by the end of uh, induction therapy, uh, the CR rate uh, was 13%. That swelled to 50% uh, by the end of transplant. And then by the end of the two cycles of DARA RVD consolidation therapy, 70% uh, of patients were in a complete response with 56% of patients being in stringent complete response. Overall response rate was 100%. Interestingly, when we get into the maintenance portion of this trial, um, you'll see that the uh, depth of response continues to improve. So the complete response rate actually uh, swells to 94%. 
uh, after 12 months of daratumumab lenalidomide maintenance therapy, and it remains at 94% after two years uh, of maintenance therapy. So essentially 15 out of 16 patients achieved a stringent complete response, and we're holding on to that after two years of maintenance therapy. When we look at MRD negativity at 10 to the minus five level of sensitivity, this is using Adaptive's uh, next generation sequencing platform. At the end of induction, we have a 19% MRD negativity rate that goes up to 50% by the end of post-transplant consolidation treatment. Uh, after one year of maintenance therapy, that increases further uh, to 75%. And then by the end of two years of maintenance therapy, we're at 81%. So 81% of the patients on the uh, safety run-in achieved MRD negativity over the course uh, of therapy. Uh, Progression-free survival um, at the 36-month mark um, in the safety run-in is a uh, respectable 78.1%, which mirrors the uh, randomized phase two portion of the trial quite nicely. And the 36 month uh, overall survival is 93.8%, which is really quite remarkable. And also mirrors uh, the experience uh, from the randomized phase two portion of the study as well. Um, moving on to the randomized phase. So the, the other thing that I'll mention is that only three of the 16 patients that were on the safety run in experienced dose limiting toxicities. And these dose limiting toxicities did not prevent them from continuing on therapy. So, so generally speaking, uh, based on that experience, we felt that the uh, regimen was very safe for moving forward in a randomized trial. So basically, in the randomized portion of the trial, the standard of care arm received four cycles of RVD induction therapy, followed by transplant, uh, two cycles of post-transplant RVD consolidation, and then two years of lenalidomide maintenance therapy. Uh, in the experimental arm, uh, patients received four cycles of induction daratumumab uh, RVD therapy, followed by transplant, uh, two cycles of post-transplant uh, post consolidation with uh, Dara RVD, and then uh, two years worth of daratumumab lenalidomide maintenance therapy. After completion of protocol maintenance, patients were encouraged to stay on lenalidomide maintenance until disease progression or the emergence of unacceptable side effects. Um, and the primary endpoint of the study was stringent complete response rate uh, by the end of uh, consolidation with important secondary endpoints, uh, including rates of MRD negativity, uh, overall response, uh, depth of response, uh, progression-free and overall survival, as well as safety. So with regards to the uh, baseline characteristics of the patients on the randomized portion of the trial, uh, they were well balanced with regards to ISS stage. Uh, the majority of patients having ISS stage one disease uh, going into therapy, approximately 15% of patients in both arms of the trial had high risk cytogenetics. But generally speaking, uh, the baseline demographic and disease characteristics were well balanced between the two arms of the study. Importantly, um, the uh, depth of response improved over the course of time in both arms uh, of the trial, uh, but the depth of response uh, favored the daratumumab arm uh, at every step of the game. So just uh, focusing on the end of consolidation, and this is uh, data that we've reported previously, we met our primary endpoint of showing superiority of stringent complete response by the end of consolidation. Um, and this has been published in blood at this point. So the uh, um, stringent CR rate uh, by the end of consolidation in the DARA arm was 42.4% relative to 32% uh, for those that were uh, on the control arm. And importantly, this uh, improved dramatically uh, over the course of the first year of the uh, maintenance therapy, uh, which is the, the focus of this uh, ASH uh, presentation. So by the end of 12 months of maintenance therapy, the overall complete response rate in the DARA arm increased to 81.8%, you know, relative to 60.8% for those in the control arm. And if you look specifically at stringent complete response uh, at the end of one year of maintenance, 63.6% versus 47.4%. So a very um, clear and highly statistically significant difference 
an overall CR rate as well as stringent CR uh, with the addition of daratumumab into the induction consolidation and maintenance portions of the um, therapy. When we again look at MRD negative rates at the 10 to the minus 5 level of sensitivity, if we're looking specifically at the MRD evaluable patient population, uh, MRD uh, negative rates um, at the 12 months of maintenance therapy cutoff was 78.3% for those in the DARA arm versus 39.4% for those on the control arm. So very clearly a dramatic difference in MRD negativity um, that uh, increases further, you know, as you go into maintenance therapy uh, favoring the daratumumab arm. Uh, we also looked at uh, sustained MRD negativity, and we looked at both uh, six, or, six months or longer as well as 12 months or longer. So if we're looking just at six months or longer, uh, close to 40% of patients in the DARA arm have sustained MRD negativity in contrast to just 7.8% for those in the control arm. And if we're looking at sustained MRD, MRD negativity lasting at least 12 months, about 30% in the DARA arm versus 3% in the control arm. So not only are we seeing an improvement in MRD negativity, but we're seeing a very clear improvement in sustained MRD negativity, which is likely even more important. And this was highly statistically significant. Um, as far as progression-free survival is concerned, um, at 24 months, progression-free survival is 94.5% in the DARA arm versus 90.8% in the control arm. So uh, a numerical difference that has not reached statistical significance at this point, and the 24-month overall survival is very good in both arms at 94.7% and 93.3%. Um, as far as side effects are concerned, you know, we did see a higher rate of uh, hematologic toxicity, particularly uh, neutropenia with the addition of daratumumab. So if we're looking at grade three or higher, Neutropenia, 43% versus 24% in the DARA arm. And if we're looking at thrombocytopenia, grade three and four, 15% in the DARA arm versus 9% uh, in the uh, control arm. Um, if we're looking at uh, infections, you know, there was a higher rate of infections overall in the DARA arm, but when you look at grade three and higher infections, there was not a significant difference uh, between the two arms uh, of the trial. And uh, what are important takeaways from the study about the quadruplet therapy that you've discussed, daratumumab plus lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone? So I would say that the take-home points are that it's safe. Uh, as far as side effects are concerned, um, a higher rate of neutropenia and thrombocytopenia, but a, a manageable difference. Uh, there also is an increased risk of infection, um, but you know when you look at serious infections of grade three or higher, there's no uh, difference. So that's one important point. Um, also, with regards to safety, you know while there may be a slightly increased need to use pleurixafor in addition to GCSF uh, for stem cell mobilization, uh, stem cell mobilization is um, not uh, clinically impacted. Um, with the addition of daratumumab uh, into induction therapy. And similarly, time to engraftment is not impacted by the use of daratumumab uh, either. Um, I think you know, we've demonstrated very clearly in a randomized trial that adding daratumumab into induction consolidation and maintenance therapy in transplant eligible myeloma patients clearly improves depth of response and that signal of improved depth of response, whether you're looking at stringent CR or MRD negativity, uh, continues to improve over the course of time, including one year into uh, maintenance therapy. And we're going to need longer follow-up uh, to determine whether that translates into uh, a difference in progression for your overall survival. And speaking of follow-up, uh, is there any future research planned for this regimen in uh, multiple myeloma? So the primary purpose of the Griffin trial was to support the incorporation of daratumumab into the RVD backbone uh, here in the uh, United States. Um, and this study was specifically powered on a stringent uh, complete response uh, by the end of consolidation. It was not powered to look at a difference in uh, progression-free survival. 
Um, however, after you know this particular trial uh, was written and launched, uh, very critical data from the SWAG group, the S0777 trial, uh, showed in a non-transplant setting that the addition of fortezomib into the lenalidomide dexamethasone uh, backbone in newly diagnosed uh, myeloma patients not only improved progression-free survival, but overall survival as well. So that actually did lead to regulatory approvals of the use of RVD um, in, in other countries in the world. Uh, so for that reason, uh, the phase three Perseus study was launched, uh, which is very similar in design uh, to the Griffin trial, uh, but is a, a, a larger a study that is powered on progression-free survival. Uh, so we will see, you know, um, definitively with that particular trial, whether this very clear improvement in depth of response with the addition of daratumumab into the RVD backbone does improve progression-free survival or not.